Morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode 176 in the book of Genesis. Today, we're going to talk about kissing your killers. I'm going to start with a, a history lesson here from Rwanda in 1994 during a 100-day uh, period. About 200,000 Hutu, that's a, tr a, a tribe, killed 800,000 Tutsi for kind of racial and social and tribal and economic, but the primary reasons for the color of their skin. It's just an incredible story. So afterwards, the country didn't have the bandwidth to, to bring 200,000 plus uh, people, murderers, 200,000 murderers. They didn't have the bandwidth to imprison them. So each offended village, which was essentially every village, started a local reconciliation process on, on their grass courts, the Gachacha, I think I'm saying that correctly. Actually, I'm sure I'm not saying it correctly, but they went to grass courts and each village, uh, essentially the families of the slain decided for, to forgive. They went through this process of national forgiveness. It's really a witness to the whole world. And it's not an exaggeration to say that essentially the whole country forgave the offenders. And they became a country with the help of the Christians there of forgivers. So the problem was less with the forgivers than those who had hacked and burned their, their neighbors to death. They were the ones that had the most difficult time. And in our story, I think that's what's going to happen here today. So similarly, Joseph was wronged, was wronged. He was the wronged party and he didn't do anything wrong. And that led him to be able to give grace and forgiveness to those, his brothers, who had wronged him. So when the meeting day came, when they finally met up, uh, he, Joseph was ready. So Joseph doesn't say, I'll never forgive you. He says, I've forgiven you already. And so he enters the, the, the room with the posture of forgiveness in the context of this betrayal of his brothers. Now, I'm not underestimating the wrong that Joseph had done to him. He was in prison. It was real difficulty. Um, but when the brothers walked in the door, Joseph was ready to forgive them. In fact, he kisses them because he had done the hard work so that when they did come, he was ready. So the, you know, the, the, the point we're going to get to is let's be ready in forgiveness. So when our offender returns, we are ready to do the right thing. Now, you know, the charge is really tall. This is a steep, steep hill here is to make forgiveness a common thing in your life, even be known for it, which I think Joseph does here. So jo Joseph doesn't, you know, proclaim himself as a forgiver. He just does it. He, he kicks everybody out of the room. He deals with his brothers in Genesis chapter 45. Um, and when does Joseph forgive his brother? Now think about this. He forgave his brother in a time when he had no expectation that he would ever see his brothers again. Essentially, he like forgives them in his, in his closet. And he also had no expectation, no inkling that they would ever say, I am sorry. So for us, is there something you have, someone you haven't forgiven? Is there, uh, you know, you may, you may say that they've never asked for forgiveness, so I'm not going to forgive them. I'll just hold it over them. You know, so who's going my question for that would be, who's going to be in prison for your 20 years? It'll be you that's in prison. So Joseph, even though he was in prison, was, was free from this, this uh, harboring this guilt. So are you going to let that person run space inside your head for the, for the 20 years? Joseph decides, no, I'm going to forgive them. And so why do the hard work beforehand? So that when your offender finally walks in the door, when he gets the light bulb, when he's convicted, they're probably going to need some help because it's a hard thing. Asking for forgiveness, just like it was in Rwanda, uh, is, is a very difficult thing. So it's best if you've done the difficult stuff on your side, the, your side of the coin, uh, so that you can help them do what's perhaps even more difficult on their side. So what's more difficult, asking for forgiveness from another human or extending forgiveness to another human? In my humble opinion, it's the asking, which is a little bit harder. So Joseph says to his brothers, hey, don't quarrel among yourselves. So after he confronts them with this, their, their sin, he says, don't quarrel yourselves as you go back and forth to your father uh, Israel up, up in the nation of Israel. 
And why might they fight? Well, because they're wrestling with repentance. They're wrestling with guilt, and they have the hardest job. So I, I always say to my young counsel, marriage people, uh, premarital counseling, uh, that forgiveness is the most important skill in marriage. And repentance, this is the other side of that, which is the repentance is the most important skill in marriage. They're really one and the same. And in life, and in childhood, and at work, and at church. So if I ever gave a TED Talk, now no one's ever, ever invited me, uh, about the most important thing in the secular world, I would talk about forgiveness and repentance. It's the same, the two sides of the, of the same court, a coin. But look into the story. And as an example, Joseph forgives first. So when the brothers realized that the guy in front of them was Joseph, they were dismayed. They were trembling. They were terrified. Because why? Because they were still guilty. So I ask, who was in prison for 20 years? Was it Joseph? No, Joseph was, you know, emotionally free. But who lived in fear of right judgment and justice due for what they had done? So for us, the charge is, let's do the hard work of repenting and forgiving and make it a characteristic of our lives. So maybe let's use Joseph as an example to think about and help with establishing this posture of forgiveness. Joseph did it, not knowing that his brothers would ever repent and long before they ever asked for it. So the one commentator said before that the, that the high water mark of Joseph's spiritual understanding was this concept of, hey, you sold me, but God sent me. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Uh, and I'm going to put a little asterisk there and, and, and maybe add, well, how about forgiving and maybe help his brother move from regret to repentance? That might be, that, that's that's pretty heavy lifting there as well. So in a sense, I think Joseph literally kisses his brothers in chapter 45 of Genesis, and the Rwandan Tutsis kissed their killers. So perhaps we should put our hearts in a posture to do the same. Let's be ready to forgive. Thanks for listening.